Everybody clap your hands. Come on, y'all. Check it out, y'all. You heard it from him. We are starting some multi-step word problems in this video, and you got to be clapping your hands because uh, we are wrapping that up, actually. Um, but our riddle, uh, before we start talking about that, is actually about clapping of hands. What has hands but cannot clap? Uh, so think about uh, something that has hands but cannot clap. And we'll revisit that before the end of the video today. All right, let's take a look at our CUBES acronym. Remember, the CUBES acronym is what we use whenever we are uh, looking at word problems. The C stands for circle the numbers. Uh, so in every word problem, there are some numbers, um, sometimes more than one digit, but they all need to be circled so that they can pop out just a little bit more. The U stands for underline the question. And I usually... Uh, like to darken a little bit underneath the final unit because that saves me the step later on. So as I'm underlining the question, I just darken just a little bit more underneath the final unit. And the B stands for box keywords. Uh, you have been given a cheat sheet that uh, you can still continue to review, but eventually you're going to have to try and memorize any words that are keywords for addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division. However, we talked about how keywords are sometimes dangerous because they don't always mean that operation. However, uh, the words like sum, difference, product, and quotient typically, almost 100% of the time, mean uh, their operation. So sum is addition, difference is subtraction, product is multiplication, and quotient is division. Um, but there's definitely a lot of other words such as each that can be a little bit confusing in terms of either it's multiplication or division. E stands for evaluate the operation. And that basically means that you have to determine uh, which operations you're going to use. Based on the context of the word problem, you have to figure out are you going to be adding first, are you going to be subtracting first, multiplying or dividing and usually since it's a multi-step word problem you're going to have to do two different operations but that is step E. And a lot of times I tell students to uh, draw a picture because that can be quite helpful as well and when you figure out the operations then you actually do the math which is to solve and then that is the end of a word problem. Let's take a look at a word problem together and I purposely left the numbers out because I want you to start thinking about word problems um, without the numbers, so you can just focus on the context and the uh, keywords and the clues around them. So Harry had a certain number of baseball cards. He kept some and shared the rest evenly among his certain number of friends. How many baseball cards did each friend get? So I know that in this word problem, there's be a number here, a number here, and a number here, so I've circled my numbers. My next step is to underline the question. Uh, so I'm going to underline how many baseball cards did each friend get. And I know my final unit is baseball cards, so I'm going to darken underneath that so that later on I just have to look at my darkened part of my underline to find out what my unit is. And now I'm going to box keywords. Uh, looking through here, shared evenly. Uh, so sharing, uh, sharing evenly typically means to divide. How many is not a keyword, but how many more is. Unfortunately, I cannot box how many because how many could be basically any operation. I do see the word each over here. So now I have boxed my keywords. Uh, based on the context, I'm going to start evaluating the operations that I would need to do. So I know Harry has some baseball cards and he's going to keep some. I'm going to share the rest. So I know that uh, if he's going to be sharing the rest evenly amongst his friends, he's going to have to subtract out however many he is keeping from his total number of baseball cards. So the first operation is probably going to be subtraction, and then he's going to have to divide, sharing them evenly among his friends, um, which is why the each word also uh, reminds me to divide as well, because each kid is going to get these baseball cards, and obviously it's not going to be any more than however many Harry has. So now let's actually just throw in some numbers here. Let's say uh, he has 10 baseball cards. Uh, he kept two of them and he's going to share the rest evenly amongst his four friends. So notice we believe that the very first operation was to subtract. Uh, so he has 10, he keeps two. So 
he obviously only has eight cards left, and he's going to share those cards evenly amongst his four friends. So he's going to split those cards with four kids, and so that means that eight divided by four is that each kid would get two baseball cards, and that would be your final answer. Let's take a look at another one. Ron runs a certain number of miles on Monday and a certain times that many on Tuesday. So I know that on Tuesday he runs more than on Monday. Um, so I know that's going to be some a multiplication there. If he wants to run a total of, so this is obviously a larger number, if it's a total of miles this week, how many more miles does he need to run? So I have already taken care of the circling my numbers or lack thereof, uh, as there aren't any numbers actually in this, but we'll fill those in later. Underlining the question is my next part, so how many more miles does he need to run? And then B, I'm going to box my keywords. Uh, I see times up here. Uh, I also see the word total and how many more. Um, looking back here, remember we talked about how times uh, usually means multiplication. In this case, since it says blank times that many on Tuesday. We know that Tuesday is more than Monday, so this should be a larger number, so I know I have to multiply there. And he wants to run a total of a certain number here, so that means that uh, with a total, that means that there's a probably a larger number here. And how many more usually means to subtract. So let's fill in some numbers here after we box our keywords. Let's say he runs three miles on Monday and two times that on Tuesday. If he wants to run a total of, let's say, 30 miles this week. How many more miles does he need to run? So let's just pull out that information here. Monday, he runs three. Tuesday, he does two times that, so that's three times two, which equals six. And he wants to run a total at the end of the week. He wants to have 30 miles altogether. Uh, so I know right now he has ran a total of nine miles on Monday and Tuesday. So the rest, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, must uh, be a number that would get us to 30. Now, because it's how many more, I can actually figure out what that number is, because I know 9 plus something will give me 30. In order to solve for that, I'm going to use the inverse operation, which is subtraction. 30 minus 9, do a little bit of borrowing here, and I'm left with 21. So I know that these three days, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, when I total them, I don't even need to know what they are, but I know that all of them totaled is 21. So I know that he's going to need to run 21 more miles. And that is my final answer. Nice job, Ron. And wouldn't you know, Hermione is next. So we've had Harry, Ron, and Hermione. Very interesting. I wonder where they're from. Hermione baked a certain number of trays of a certain number of cookies. After they cooled, she divided the cookies evenly into, bag, into a certain number of bags. How many cookies did Hermione place in each bag? So I've done the C-step. And usually I do the C-step as I'm reading through my very first time. Because I'm just trying to find the numbers. And now I'm going to go to underlining the question. How many cookies did Hermione place in each bag? I know my final unit is going to be cookies. Usually it's right after how many. Or after the first couple words of the last sentence. And now I'm going to go to box keywords. Uh, looking through here, uh, I see the word divided. That's kind of a keyword to me. And each as well. And you could also say evenly as well too. Uh, thinking about uh, evaluating the operations, if I have a certain number of trays of cookies, um, if I want to know how many cookies she actually has, I know that's going to have to involve some multiplication. And then I'm going to divide these cookies, because dividing evenly means division, into bags. First step is multiply, then I'm going to divide. I um, mean, that's kind of where the each plays as well, because I know it's going to be division. Um, and how many cookies did Hermione place in each bag? And so each goes along with the division here. So let's say she has five trays of six cookies. Uh, that means that if she has five trays of six cookies, that means she's got five times six cookies, which is equal to 30 cookies total. Um, I'm going to need that for the next part, because after they cooled, she divided the cookies evenly into, let's say, um, two bags. How many cookies did Hermione place in each bag? So after I've done my multiplication, if I'm dividing those 30 cookies into two bags, uh, let's say I have a bag one and a bag two, I'm just going to have to continuously put these cookies into the bags, um, and all 30 cookies have to be placed. And if I kept going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, that would be division 
and there would be 15 cookies in each bag. So notice how cubes kind of works, helps you break down the problem uh, into smaller steps, making it a little bit less overwhelming, because I know multi-step word problems can be quite overwhelming, uh, as there's definitely a lot of information. Let's get to our riddle here. Uh, before we get to that, might as well just play this one more time. Freeze! Everybody clap your hands! Come on, y'all! Check it out, y'all! And I would continue that video, but of course, uh, this is not a dance video or a music video. But it was definitely good to take a little break from our multi-step word problems, because as exhilarating, as fun as they are, it is kind of nice to just have a little uh, break and just relax and think about a nice little riddle here. So what has hands but cannot clap? Obviously, humans, we've got hands. Um, some animals even have hands as well. Uh, but as humans... Uh, if you've got hands, pretty much you probably can clap. Um, but I will just let you know that the answer is not a human. This is actually an object. And it's an object that is actually in my classroom. Uh, Miss Whalen actually has one as well. Uh, you probably have one in your house as well. And I'm going to leave it at that because I feel like I'm giving it away almost. But just think about what has hands. And it's pretty much an object that every house or classroom has. Good luck.